What is going on, YouTube? Pinchy House Garage here, and on today's episode, we're working on Filbert. We're changing that oil pan because we're low, and we gotta fix it. So let's get to work because this is Pinchy House Garage. <laughs> So we're gonna show you guys what's going on here on Filbert. Uh, we hit something a couple weeks ago and we just drained the oil pan. You guys can see right now it's dripping. But if you guys could see right here, there's a good scrape and that damaged my pan where it had a constant drip. Um, now on top of that, we have another leak uh, coming from the housing up there. We still haven't figured out why, but I replaced that oil cooler two times already and I still have a leak. So that's really, really annoying. I don't know what's causing it, um, but we're going to figure that one out later. But for right now, we're going to be doing a DIY on how to replace the oil pan. Now, there's two big tools you're going to need for this job. Number one is a 10 millimeter for your, um, for your uh, oil pan bolts. Number two is an Allen wrench, and you need a long Allen wrench. I'm talking about like a six inch or longer uh, wrench for this job. So we're gonna show you guys all the bolts that you're gonna need to remove to remove just the pan. Um, you're gonna need to remove your uh, oil return line right here on the turbo. Uh, for us, we have a big turbo, so we have a custom uh, AN fitting one. So we have to remove that. And then, we are upside down and we're gonna walk across you'll see here all the way down and then these are the annoying ones right here there's one two three and four that are really annoying that you're gonna need an allen wrench to get out um, because the way that they're placed on top of that um, you're gonna need a 16 millimeter for this guy um, forgot to mention that <laughs> for this guy and this guy over here is gonna need a 16 back here um, for these bolts to come off actually no I'm corrected three one two and three 16 millimeter bolts these three hold the pan in place as well um, man there's a lot of oil down here and it's all coming from this one spot right here it's really annoying um, from right there you guys can see there's a drop of oil right there and it's dripping straight down and out we're going to try a different oil um oil filter this time around and see if that solves the problem um so we're going to correct ourselves we're going to need three tools uh three 16 millimeter bolts 10 millimeter um socket deep socket okay guys with an extension and then you're going to need a long allen wrench and i'll get you guys the exact size in just a minute all right so we need our 16s here remove yeah what's up there you try so right here we're going to be removing again these three bolts the three sixteens uh, this is what holds the pan on this side and then we're going to remove all the other ones that remove that hold the pan underneath the car or to the block that's the better way to saying it you know what i'm gonna actually go grab a pair of gloves me a second all right we're back so I had to teach my nephew here how to ride a bike not ride a bike but have him not be afraid of his new bike he got a, a bigger bike that we got for him from my neighbor so he can teach him how to use that so took a man to break so I'm gonna use some air tools right now because this is going to take way too long. Um, since I already broke them loose, we're going to use this, an air ratchet. Turn your volume down, please. 
Oops, wrong way. <laughs> is to remove the return line here and this uses an allen wrench i put the bolt back on so it didn't drip all over the place we're going to grab a rag and clean underneath here next and then once we have all that taken care of we're going to uh, remove this guy it will drip a little bit these return lines do retain a bit of oil so um word of advice have some cardboard on the floor a couple rags that way when you drop it um kind of keep your oil panel uh your oil um container here and let it sit on that and let it drain into that while you work on everything else uh, we're going to use the air ratchet to remove the rest of the 10 millimeter bolts around the only issue we're going to have again are these guys right here underneath and we're going to show you guys to use the proper um long guy here and i'll tell you guys which long allen wrench i believe it's the five let me confirm that really quick <laughs> Yeah, it's a five. Yeah, so five millimeter Allen wrench is what you're gonna need. Uh, these nice long six, eight inch ones are the best for this up um, for this job. So you can get in up in there, really a nice tight area. Try to get one with a with a socket, not with a, just hand. You're going to be there way too long, and you have a really, really nice high risk of, um, what's it called, damaging the threads. So be forewarned. Cool. That's also a five there as well. Like I said earlier, we're removing the uh, the Allen bolt here, and you can see already it's already dripping. So this is why we have to have our little oil catch can down here at the bottom um, for this reason. It won't drip that much because we drained most of it from the from the drain plug so but again you never know you see it's dripping a decent amount right now and that's just from the that's from the turbo so we want to move our pan Kind of over here and you just let it drain down there just like that so out of the way um, out of sight out of mind it's kind of the best solution for that um, these guys again like to leak a lot so keep it out of the way while you work on everything else um, we already re removed the three 16 millimeter bolts here now now we're going to work with our 10 millimeters around the pen and then the last three right here or four, I'm not 100% sure it's three or four. Uh, we'll confirm that in just a little bit. And these are all, we use the uh, five millimeter Allen wrench to remove those guys. I'm trying to make sure you guys get a good view of this. All right. Let's see if you guys get a good view. Cool. All right, so down here, like we were talking before, using the five millimeter bolt, I mean, Allen, we're gonna remove this guy right here. 
Again, you can use a deep socket uh, tin, but it's a lot harder than you think. So I highly recommend using uh, a five millimeter Allen for this job on this part of the pan. And we're gonna confirm one, two, three, four in total that you need to remove on this side. See right there has one. Now, some of these bolts <laughs> are in the dumbest angle possible. So make sure you give it a good tap. Because you're going to strip them like I just did. Ay, ay. So there's one I just stripped. Funny thing, I put these on at 11 foot pounds, which is the factory torque specification, and I just stripped it at 11 foot pounds. That's insane. And then that happens. <laughs> All right, well, I fell in there. We'll get to it in a little bit. See, this one makes a lot more sense where it's at. It's like kind of in the middle. So currently I have one that's stripped. So kind of irritated for that right now because again these are annoying as all heck so I dread doing oil pans so we're down to one and we stripped it already so what we're going to try to do is Cram the 10 millimeter in there and see if we can get it out. shallow one for this one yeah be right back all right so we figured out how to take out this nuisance right here and what we ended up doing this is the one that we're having a lot of problems with um we ended up getting a quarter inch socket with a wobble head went in there got it at a right angle and it popped right out so now we removed all the bolts except for that one that one's coming out right now um, it's loose, so it's already off, but we replaced we removed every single bolt all around the pan You guys can see that Every single one has been removed plus the one two three four bolts here that hold the pan in this area right here so the Manufacturers are actually really cool. They provide you a spot right here. See this right here this lip where you can put a flathead screwdriver and pry the pan down. Uh, this allows you to not damage the main surface area, the mating surface area from the pan to the block, which is super vital for not damaging anything uh, and causing an oil leak down the road. So we're gonna grab a big flathead screwdriver and pry uh, right there in the corner. Uh, they offer another spot 
right here if you guys can see that there's like a notch in here that's for you to get it at an angle not to dig right into it never dig a flyhead screwdriver into it because you'll scratch the surface of the pan which is made of aluminum which is very soft and potentially causing an oil leak over time so always try to find a nice spot where it doesn't touch the actual pan surface besides the outside of it hopefully you guys can see that so i'm right here where we we're just talking about Move the camera a little bit back more there we go and like i was saying cram it in there you hear the pan pop <laughs> and it's off <laughs> just like that guys um now the next thing your next big big step here is to remove all the old rtv that you guys use to install your pan because we need a super clean surface to install the new pan so what you do you can go about it two ways get a rag first and rub off as much as you can with a rag now if you can't get everything off then you get a brand new razor understand that a brand new razor blade do not get a used razor blade because a lot of them have dull edges and can scratch the surface here and again cause a potential leak which is what we're trying to prevent okay so scrub everything down um, with a rag and then when you're done grab a razor blade and scrape off what is left all right so we're here now at the pan so like i was saying clean everything that matters to you yeah that's cracked yay um so we're gonna go around here and you can see it, it rubs right off um and that's what we want to do first as much as we can is rub off the old rtv now 1.8 t's do not have a gasket you cannot buy a gasket for these oil pans um you have to make your own that's why they have such a smooth surface so you can mate it with an rtv and not worry about an oil leak now i'm going to show you guys a cool little trick about using rtv because rtv is very tricky if not done correctly because you'll have an oil leak again and he had to redo this whole job and there's an easy trick to it and the way that we do rtv on anything we apply here um we have to number one um apply it to the pan let it sit for a couple minutes don't just slap the pan on immediately what we want is the rtv to be tacky um we don't want it to be just you know just rtv on a pan so the more tackier the the rtv is the better it will stick to the new surface area that we created um the reason why if you don't what happens with rtv in general if you have it just you just clean the surface and then you slap rtv on um you have oil uh, residue everywhere on this block and sometimes the oil residue will prevent the RTV from sticking correctly so we want to clean this surface area like it's the first time we've uh, built this block you know um, we built this block actually two years ago by the way and this engine has been doing very good um, besides its minor little, minor little quirks with the uh, random oil leaks we've been having. But again, it's a VW. They tend to leak every now and then. I'm not super disappointed. Uh, you know. So just keep repeat, uh, scrubbing, scrubbing, scrubbing until we're done. And then we're going to go with the razor blade and clean as, all the little stuff that we can't get by rubbing them off. Uh, razor blade will get the rest of this really hard rtv stuff to come off uh, i know it's a little overkill guys but again i don't want to be back and doing this again we're actually going to put a skid plate on here after this 
Uh, one of our brand new skid plates from Pinchiel's Garage. We're going to be installing that. That'll be another DIY, by the way. Um, so I don't want to do this ever again. So this is what I'm going to do to fix that problem. All right. So we'll show you guys in a little bit what to do next. All right. So we cleaned the entire surface pretty much as good as I can get it. Um, I'm getting little extra little spots here and there. Um, so I grabbed my fly head. The razor blade didn't work so on these little spots. So I grabbed my fly head and kind of put it on uh, the edge of a rag here and dig into it and it comes off kind of. <laughs> Um, again, get as much of it as you can. I'm like at 90 plus percent removed. Um, degrease it if you can. If not, it's okay. Um, the next step is installing your pan. But prior to installing your pan, you got to prep it. You got to get RTV on there first. You can't just um, stop RTV on and then call it a day. Um, we don't put the RTV on the block. We put it on the pan, okay? And then we install it uh, in a kind of crisscross opposites pattern um, by hand. We don't do anything to torque spec first. We do it all by hand, and then at the end, once everything is installed, then we do it to torque specifications in opposite, you know, uh, portions. Uh, but be wary to get make sure all oil does disappear um, on the block itself. It's okay if it's dripping straight down. We don't want it on the block. Remember that, guys. Uh, the least amount of oil, the better. So we're using a Spectra oil pan. Order it directly from AutoZone. So we're using an aluminum pan. We're not using a hybrid pan. And the reason why I'm using an aluminum pan for this is because the hybrid pan, we're going to use an, uh, a skid plate. So I'm not concerned for that. Uh, one thing you need to look for is make sure there's any burrs. If there's anything, kind of grab a piece of sandpaper and get the edges cleaned off. Um, you don't want to cut yourself when you're installing. That's the only reason why I say that. Um, inspect your pan. Make sure everything looks fine and dandy no imperfections there are the bolts right there for the holding the pan in place Ooh, almost dropped that so now we're going to do rtv let's see here okay that works all right so RTV. Now we're going to use black, ultra black from uh, per, Permatex, I think that's what it's called. Um, go like this. Since I already use it, it's got pretty much a solid. So, we're just going to poke a hole down here at the bottom. Tap that back up. Oh, it's got one down here. Okay. <laughs> so, dab it on your finger and smear it. Okay. If you guys ever installed a CPU um, thermal paste, the less is more uh, concept is the way to do it. Okay, uh, what you want to do is just cover it. You want to cover the, the metal surface as best you can with the least amount of RTV um, as possible. I mean, it's okay if it's a little uh, thick, but remember, make sure it's thin. It's like a thick layer, but it's thin. Um, we do this because, number one, you don't want RTV inside your pen. That's a big, that's a big no-no. Um, so I'll try to prevent that. Hi, 
Hey, Papa. So we're going here. Again, we're working our way down. Now, you don't have to work fast. The RTV will cure, all right? Which is okay. Um, you want it to cure and you want it to get tacky. The longer you let it sit out, um, the better. Now, don't let it sit out too long because then it won't stick. Um, again, you're, you're making it sticky. Um, you don't want it to be slippery like it is right now when it's fresh. We want it to have like kind of a sticky surface to it. It's okay. Now, if your surface is smooth like ours on our on our block, um, this will pretty much seal perfect. Um, now, if you have like notches or you damage your pan by dropping your pan or cramming a flathead screwdriver and gouging the aluminum surface then i would probably put a little bit more rtv in that area to help it not leak but i'm telling you this right now you have a good chance of it it's going to leak and that's just to be honest with you If it's really hot outside, guys, that means this RTV will cure a little bit faster than normal. Um, so be wary about that as well. Right now it's a beautiful 60, 70 degrees right here in California. <laughs> and it's December. <laughs> Sorry for you other states that have snow right now or it's super cold. Um, California's cool. I mean, we got nice weather. I'm going to say not all year, but almost all year round. And it's good car weather. That's what I'm going to call it, car weather. I'm in the middle of December and I'm doing an oil pan. Alright, so pan is set. Now, again, wait a couple minutes. I'd say like three or four minutes, not too long. Um, so, before you install your pan, again, get some bolts ready. Get your ratchet ready, get your tools ready um, for you to install this because you want to be able to start it and install it and not have a problem during the process uh, i recommend cleaning your threads from each bolt that you're going to install immediately and whichever bolts you're going to install uh, when you start them start them from four corners that way there's an even amount of pressure throughout the pan during the start of your installation and then start cramming all the bolts all around in kind of a circle hand tighten guys that is the key hand tighten them do not start torquing them down even though you don't need a lot of torque for these guys it's 11 foot pounds you still don't want to um what's it called start torquing everything down until you have everything hand tightened and the reason for this is because when you start to torque everything down um and you don't have them hand tightened it's going to spread uh, RTV in areas where you don't want it and possibly not seal correctly, okay? Uh, we're back, so let's get started and getting these uh, bolts threaded in. So let's get our extension here, our 10 mil, and we're going to do everything by hand. 
It's been about an extra three minutes. So, oh, which way is this? Is it this way? Yeah, it's this way. And hold the pan up. All right, Papa. I gotta come. I gotta work still. All right. So we got one in. So that'll hold it in place for you guys while you start getting. All of them going so all right so we're almost done with all the bolts we got like another 10 more um, once you get them all down we'll show you guys what to do next this, again this is the time consuming part is putting all these bolts in by hand um, Again, you cannot, I, I, I mean, you can, but I don't recommend it is to use a ratchet to tighten these down by hand. Just do them by hand. I did one over on the corner by with a ratchet just because my the gloves I was wearing wasn't allowing me to spin them by hand. Um, once I took my gloves off, it was just perfect. Um... So I will show you guys in a little bit what you guys need to do next, all right? See you guys in a couple minutes. All right, so we're back. So we got every single bolt on here except for the drain, uh, the return line. Everything's set to 11 foot pounds. No more, no less, guys, all right? So after you torque everything down to 11 foot pounds, the ones that require a little bit more torque than anything else are your transmission bolts. Uh, the three one, the one, two, three bolts here that are on the 16. Uh, get you guys the torque specs for that. Um, the next thing we're gonna need to do is the return line. Obviously we're gonna need to put some brand new RTV in there. Um, I'm actually thinking about redoing the the fitting here with some new um, new uh, Teflon tape on the inside it's leaking a little bit uh, so I'm probably gonna repair that but I'm gonna install the the return line here back on and then once I have it bolted on then I'll remove the, the return line on there and get that thing sorted out um, so look up your torque specs for these three bolts but everything else on the pan itself is 11 foot-pounds <laughs> So the way that we got the two, the two really, really annoying bolts here is this one and this one over here, or these two, depends on which one's harder, depending on your setup, but um, these are really annoying. So I'm gonna tell you guys a little secret here. Not really a secret, but use a quarter inch ratchet with a wobble head, and that way you can get the two bolts on there to go on there. But remember to do it by hand and not with the ratchet because if not you're going to cross thread it on the on the way in and we don't want that to happen uh, so i did it with these two right here and they went in smoothly by hand um, that's it and again um, once you do that get an adapter and torque spec these to 11 foot pounds they're going to be pretty hard by the way they're not going to be easy to torque spec so do the best you can but everything else has got to be 11 foot pounds and you got to torque them down kind of like opposites and working your way into the middle do not just torque them down in a full circle that's a bad thing to do because if you do that the rtv won't spread correctly so we want it to kind of go opposite opposite like this and then working your way back until you get to the middle and then you're done
this episode of Pinchy House Garage, doing a DIY on an oil pan install. Pain in the butt, but again, for us lowered guys, best thing to do is replace it and then get yourself a Pinchy House Garage skid plate so it never ever happens again. Thanks for tuning in. Have a wonderful God day, guys. And we'll see you guys soon again at Pinchal's Garage because we're going to break, we're going to fix, and we'll repeat. Peace out, everyone.